know marijuana does not make you crazy. They know marijuana does not lead you to crime. They know marijuana does not lead you to harder drugs. But marijuana is a system of control that they can exercise over you because you stepped out of line from their corporate policies. Marijuana is a benchmark question for many reasons. Number one, a society that can accommodate alcohol and tobacco has absolutely no argument with marijuana, which is far less harmful than either of those two. Uh, the state has no right to tell the individual he cannot alter his consciousness. If he can do that in respectably and, uh, and uh, in a uh, nonviolent or threatening manner, then he should be able to do that. Not with addictive drugs. Not with addictive drugs. I am not talking about legalizing drugs. I'm talking about licensing and regulating marijuana as a cash crop in the state of Kentucky. I can kick crack and cocaine and heroin out of the state of Kentucky. I can solve that problem. My granddaddy never grew crack or cocaine or heroin, but he used to grow the hell out of him. And when he did, we used to make a pretty penny on it. I'll kick crack and cocaine and heroin out because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tax and regulate the marijuana smoker and remove them as a buffer zone from around the hard drug market. You know, as a marijuana smoker, I resent being forced to run involuntary interference with the hard drug market. I don't belong in that same category. I, I will not be placed in that same category. And I sure as hell, I'm not going to be going through my life as an adult in this society looking over my shoulder, wondering when the government is going to pounce out and haul me off and hold me in a cage for ransom because of my association with the green plant my granddaddy used to grow. You know, if we're going to fight about this, we're going to fight about it in front of the courthouse with a bullhorn at 12 noon in the sunshine with the public watching. And if we're going to fight about it, we're going to fight about it politically and through the system. And we're just going to flat take over the system and remove this kind of asinine fascist law and this kind of asinine fascist mentality from existence in this society. Uh, my main issue and fear is that the whole bundle of rights of individual free choice held by the individuals in this country and citizens in this country, the kinds of freedoms that our forefathers fought and died for since 1776, that our subsequent generations have gone to war for are now under assault by the present administration and the past administration in its two-term stay in office. These people, Ronald Reagan and George Bush, are not conservatives. These people are aliens. These people have nothing to do with conservatism. When I was growing up, conservative meant you kept the government in a little box. You didn't let it out. The government stayed in a little box because when you let government out of that box, it started exponentiating and feeding upon itself, becoming self-serving and always against the interest of the people. Inexorably, it will grow to occupy the space currently occupied by our civil liberties. And it has been doing so for the last 40 years. Ronald Reagan snookered the public and said that he was going to take government off the backs of business. He did that, but he put government directly on the backs of the people. He took all that built up government, he gutted the social uh, programs and took all that money and fed his cronies with it and then bought in the military and the police force to ride herd on the population. That's exactly what's happened. I'm going to reverse that effect. When I get to be governor of the state of Kentucky, I'm going to put that government back in the box. I'm going to tell the government we don't have the right to interfere in a lot of different aspects of individuals' lives in this state. The true, real battle going on today uh, had its inception uh, formally in the 1937 New Deal legislation. And what it comes down to is a present day battle, not between the cops and the robbers, not between communism and free enterprise, not between black and white, not between Muslim and Christian. The real true battle today and on this planet is the natural cycle versus the synthetic cycle of things. It wasn't until the 1890s, 1900s, and 1910s that they found out what petroleum could be used for as far as synthesizing products. That they then found out they could make fiber out of it, they could make medicine out of it, they could make all kinds of fuel out of it. And they conspired to assume a monopoly over those commodities in this country. And looking around, they realized what it took me 18 years to realize, that the greatest competitive product that the most petroleum-like substance that could be produced from the natural cycle of things was hemp. Hemp is petroleum. Everything you make out of petroleum, you can make out of hemp, including cellophane, plastics, TNT, explosives, motor oil, fuel, cloth, medicine, 
food. Hemp is the most beneficial plant that mankind has ever domesticated on this globe. And the petrochemical industries took advantage of the flood of New Deal legislation in 1936 and 7, when government and business struck a new deal, leaving people and the citizen out of the negotiations. That all this New Deal legislation came about where all these regulations were written to regulate all these industries, but they were written by those very industry executives. And what those regulations did, in effect, was to give the monopolies to the large industries, specifically the petrochemical industries in this country. For instance, it is no coincidence that in 1937, hemp was outlawed and nylon was patented. 